Hey guys, welcome. I hope you've done your homework and started to feel into the different aspects of your consciousness at work during everyday life as a preparation for this lesson. If not, and you, if you did not get a more expanded view and feel of your everyday experiences and a more expanded, holistic, wise, wisdom-oriented or wisdom-based interpretations of everyday events as opposed to coming only from the physical mind, then I recommend that you go back to the previous lesson and do that homework again, maybe listen to the video one more time. Again, in general, I recommend that you do the same lesson at least twice, listen to the video or read the transcription or listen to the audio at least twice before continuing with the next lesson. So this lesson is called The Reflective Attitude, Making Efficient Use of Catalyst. What is catalyst? Well, basically, in human terms, how we would call that normally is suffering, basically. Now, there is a difference, but what we typically refer to as suffering or challenge or struggle is what I call catalyst. It is catalyst because it's catalytic in nature, especially if utilized that way consciously. It's catalytic. It has the potency. It has the potential to wake the participant or the receiver or the creator of that catalyst or challenge or struggle or invitation or suffering, however you want to label it. It invites the participant or the creator or the receiver, which is always the creator as well from a different level, of that challenge, of that catalyst, to become more aware of who and what he or she is and what is going on in the inner dynamics, in the inner landscape of consciousness. So catalyst is basically anything that sort of pushes your buttons a little bit, anything that wakes you up, that attempts to wake you up. And make no mistake, challenge is here to help wake us up. Ignorance and delusion and the veil of forgetfulness, which seems so thick sometimes in this third dimensional or third density rather, space-time linear reality. It seems so dense, everything out there seems so real. Everything that's not really substantially real seems so real. Whereas the, the truth actually tends to seem very unreal from this limited point of view of the physical mind. Again, that's why it's important to expand into the more non-physical aspects of your consciousness and start perceiving from there, from that state, from that vibration. So anything that offers us challenge, it's underlying intention is to wake us up to show us a specific new route angle point of view perspective definition or give us in general more choice as to how we would like to redefine ourselves redefine our reality and re-understand the whole picture basically anything that challenges us invites us to a bigger perspective a bigger picture and or to direct our action and direct our attitude in a new way so in a nutshell, that is what catalyst means. Catalyst refers to challenge that invites greater awareness of some kind in some direction or sometimes in no direction, except in the direction of the inner self. Catalyst is offered to the individual almost always first on the mental aspect of the being. So if we we can say we have a physical body and we have a mental slash emotional body um, and we have a sort of higher mental body, a more abstract, more logical mental body. Um, and the, the higher, the even higher level, so the higher mind or the non-physical mind and the higher self, if they notice that our attitude, our belief system and or our actions get too far out of tune with the intended song that we came here to play, to whistle, to reverberate throughout our creation. If we're getting too far out of track, if we're getting too far out of alignment for a consistent period of time, first, the first catalyst that we'll feel is the mental emotional tug, the pull, right? So first it's given to the mental emotional complex or aspect of our totality complex, of the totality of our being. So 
This comes in the form of suffering. This comes in the form of feeling out of alignment. This comes in the form of feeling contracted and feeling more limited than you really are and feeling just simply not so good or even mediocre. Now, when we're not paying attention to these feelings of discontent, of misalignment, if we're not paying attention to the catalyst when it's offered to us first at the mental and emotional planes, if we don't recognize that catalyst in that moment as catalyst, as the invitation for greater awareness, as the invitation and challenge to align more perfectly with our true being, with our non-physical minds and our higher selves and the theme for this life. If we do not first recognize that when it's first given to us on that mental emotional level, what happens is that if we consistently forget, if we consistently either not pay attention or misplace the cause of our suffering outside of ourselves, and this is the most common mistake people make, then it will eventually be transferred. The catalyst will be transferred into our circumstances. And if we don't pay attention to that, it will be transferred to into our physical bodies to the point where it's crystallized in the form of, say, a disease or um, a consistent or perpetual inconvenience. So whenever we see somebody that has a physical inconvenience or when we ourselves attract physical inconvenience, even if it's something as seemingly simple as breaking a leg, um, especially perhaps before going on a holiday, like a skiing holiday, for example, the question that we want to ask ourselves is always, what's the root cause of this that I've attracted to myself? Now, what most people do before this happens is they've already gotten many signals intuitively and mentally and emotionally that they are defining some part of their life or some part of life in general or some part of their identity in a way that's really out of alignment with their true purpose here on earth, with their true thematic exploration of the one infinite creator in form of their true selves, basically. So whenever those initial nudges are consistently either not noticed, which is actually rare, or if they are noticed, they're misplaced or their, their cause is misinterpreted. And this is what happens most frequently on planet earth. It is that people put the cause of their suffering outside of themselves. They do not take responsibility for their vibrational attitude, for their set of definitions and belief systems. And they don't recognize that they attract the challenging or sometimes extremely channel, channel, challenging uh, scenarios to themselves whether physically or circumstantially, as a result of not having paid attention to their inner alignment. But when they start paying attention to their inner alignment, the severity of the physical nature of the catalyst is eased, is soothed, is taken back, so to speak, then healing starts to take place. So what we call healing is nothing more but the being now that its catalyst for learning has transferred all the way into the physical manifestations of their body and their circumstances and they have no other choice but to pay attention but to start asking the right questions and usually this extreme scenario is what it takes for most people in our society to truly start asking themselves the right questions as soon as they start asking themselves the right questions, because now finally they're paying attention, which of course you don't have to let it get that far anymore because you have all the tools that you have now. But for most people, when they then do wake up and start asking the right questions and start pointing their consciousness in the right direction and they start making the vibrational and belief system adjustments they need to make and they start to listen to their intuition and their gut sense and their higher mind, constantly communicating to them. That's when what we call physical healing can start to occur. So physical healing is not the result of anything circumstantial or any physical means, not really, although we can use these things as a permission slip, but then we're taking physical action to compensate for a lack of vibrational alignment. 
If we give ourselves a permission slip to believe that this works for us, then it will work temporarily, let's say a physical operation where the tumor is removed. But if the real cause is not investigated and it's still placed outside of oneself, and we believe the healing comes from the doctor cutting away the tumor, and this is just that way that life works, people get tumors and they need to be removed surgically, when we do not understand that this was all reflection, this was all meant to make us more reflective, to inspire the reflective attitude of increased accelerated learning, of paying attention. If we miss these signs, even at the point of physical healing because of external means, then it's almost guaranteed that a similar or the same dis-ease form of non-ease will return to our physical vehicles or our circumstances. This is why so many people heal from cancer, gives them a break, gives them relief. The relief perpetuates itself for a while. They feel perhaps more grateful again to be alive. But these underlying belief systems are still out of alignment and they're still not knowing, they still don't fully have the awareness and the tools and they don't use their free will appropriately yet to direct their attention in the right direction. And so these same principles of manifesting disease from first having mental catalysts and not really noticing it or misplacing it as the cause for our discontentment being from outside of ourselves and then not paying attention further and further, it will have to recrystallize in the form of some kind of a disease that calls our attention. So this is what catalyst is. Catalyst is transferred from the higher vibrational levels of the subtler mental body, emotional body, then circumstantial and physical. So pay attention in the early stages of feeling not quite as good. Of course, you will in most, most cases not immediately find that catalyst is transferred into the physical vehicle and or into the circumstances. It will first be offered to you quite repeatedly on a mental slash emotional level so that you have the time to catch up with yourself, so that you have the time to realign yourself. So pay attention. If you pay attention, you are totally good. If you develop an attitude for, or a craving for the reflective attitude, if you become really happy in your reflective attitude, you can now learn most anything that your higher mind wants you to learn and use it to accelerate your spiritual journey and expansion. If you use it, properly, if you pay attention, you can now almost exclusively use the imaginative levels to learn everything you need to learn. Your communication becomes non-physical. You start to communicate very directly with your non-physical mind. So, now that you understand how this transfer of catalyst works and what catalyst is, Let's talk a little bit about the two main reasons for things not really working out very well. Because there is another reason, in a way. I mean, it's sort of a combined reason and you sort of already get the feeling of it. But when things are consistently not working out for you, when things seem to work against you, when things are not flowing very well, when you don't feel very well, both physically or emotionally or mentally and circumstantially, things just aren't going your way. They're not really going the way that you want them to go. Now, either your wants are out of alignment, meaning that what you think you want and the insistence with which you believe you want it is not actually what you as an overall being truly desire and what you from a higher, more wisdom, more expanded perspective can see and know that it would be a disservice to allow you to get the thing you think and insist you want. And sometimes it will then give it to you if you are too insistent to wake up before having it so that when you are having it, it can then show you, it can then make you feel that that's not really what you wanted after all. This is why many people, when they do get fame, when they do get richness, for example, they will understand after having gone through some years of fame and recognition and money that suddenly this isn't actually what they were looking for after all. Whereas initially it seemed really excited and they worked really hard for it and they intended really insistently upon it. For some of these people, it was genuinely in their theme to become famous and make a lot of money because that was naturally part of their theme. But for a lot of these people, in a way, this is part of their personal physical minds 
insistence and free will to choose that path. But they will then, as they are embarking upon that path and pr making progress in that direction, they will notice more and more and more that something is still out of alignment. Something is still not quite right, not quite connected to what they truly desire. So when things are not going your way, generally speaking, it is either because A, it is a true desire of yours, but you can't quite receive that reality because you are vibrationally not yet in full alignment. You're not yet a frequential match, a vibrational match to the experiential, symbolized, physicalized, crystallized, imaginative, which everything is imagination, as you know, but the experience that we call reality, you're not quite yet at the vibrational matching point to where you can be in the frequency tuned in enough to that reality to fully perceive it as real. So basically it's like you are listening to a particular radio station, a channel, and you know there's better music out there. You know that there is a channel that you like more, but you just quite don't know the frequency yet, or you're not quite able to get it there and get it right. So in terms of the emotional body and the, and the guidance system, the emotional guidance system, when you keep using the emotional guidance system, it will effortlessly and without error, without fail, lead you in the direction of your truly desired realities that are truly commensurate, that are truly reflective of your heart's desire for its theme here on earth and for its expression of the one infinite creator. So either the desire that you are tuned into is true and your interpretation of your truest desire from the higher mind's point of view, your, your ability to intuit what you truly desire is fairly accurate and so your interpretation is kind of dead on in many ways and what you think you want is actually what you truly want as a whole being. If that's the case but things are still not coming your way, the things you desire are not quite manifesting as they say, you will find that it is because you are holding on to negative definitions that your soul does not need you to hold on to. They do not serve you anymore. Usually it's a variation of, well, always it's a variation of lack, but usually this is a variation of unworthiness, undeservability, not being capable of holding that reality, not being, um, not being able to be truly who you are. Um, so you're projecting basically like, oh, I cannot remain say a good person or who I truly want to be if I get this thing that I truly desire or if I become this person I truly desire. So whatever it is, you have mixing frequencies, you have mixed frequencies, you have conflicting definitions that make you block the process of receiving, of allowing these experiences into your reality. So it's either that, and just to summarize again, it means that your ability to intuit and imagine what your true desire is, is kind of on track as far as you can be on track from your present state of vibration. So you're using your imagination and you kind of know what it is that you want. And it is not just out of vanity. It is not just out of pleasing the ego effect or, or trying to fill up some lack beliefs or voids that are created by lack beliefs. No, it's an actual passion of yours. It's actually inspired by something higher, by your imagination, by your higher mind. You have actually paid attention and the desires that you've downloaded are true ones. Now, assuming that this is the case, if things are not working out, it's because you're holding on to a belief or a definition or idea that's no longer serving you. And by following the breadcrumb trail of your joy, you will consistently bump up your frequency and to the point where that belief inevitably has to be brought to the surface and you will be able to identify it. And then when it's identified, you're able to let it go by seeing that it no longer makes sense for you to hold on to it. So increase your frequency to the point where you're being kept, where you can no longer go higher. It feels because something is contracting. You do not quite believe you're ready for it. It's not quite coming. It's very close, but it not, it's not quite there consistently. Why not? investigate what the limiting beliefs are and transform them. And I've got many lessons in the academy that will help you do this. Just look back through some of the lessons of the empowerment courses, as well as the enlightenment courses. They will all help you to come to a holistic vibrational toolkit that will be able to support you throughout any challenge or invitation for expansion. So either it's that, 
again, even briefer, you are on track with your desire. It's a true desire. It's a truly inspired want or desire or imagination. And so you're on track. Higher self goes, yay, happy, good, good job. Higher mind is in support of it. And it's already wanting to offer that reality to you, but it's you from the personal consciousness, from the conscious mind's point of view, or really it's the unconscious, but it's still the, the physical mind, sorry is what I meant, the physical mind's consciousness is, is blocking the allowing of that reality. Find out what the negative definition is and clean it up. The second option or the second cause for things consistently not working out for you or the manifestation you desire not coming your way is because you're looking in the wrong direction. It's because you have ideas that make you want things you do not truly desire that are not really in alignment with your overarching theme for this life. And that if they were given to you, you would only get more distracted and you would only become more perverted and you would only become more distorted and you would only start walking further and further away from your true alignment. And this would not serve you as a being. This would disintegrate you rather than integrate you. This would separate you further. This would cause more confusion within the overall complex of your being. And this wants to be avoided at all costs. Now you can insist, insist, insist for a very long time. And in a way, higher mind will try to find leeway to honor your free will, but it will consistently not give you exactly what you want because it's exactly the opposite of what you need. So now it's time for you to pay attention in quite a different way. So now you're not really paying attention per se in terms of like, okay, why do I believe I'm unworthy of this frequency or this desire to manifest? Now the question is similar, but it's slightly different. The questioning goes more along the lines of, how am I misplacing my desires? How am I thinking that this is the direction I want to go in? But the fact that it's not working out is, is not a roadblock because of my own lack beliefs. It's actually an arrow pointing me in a different direction, but I'm simply not interpreting it as such. So how can I see that these are simply signals from my non-physical supportive mind from the higher aspect of my overall being that is trying to coax me in moving into a different vibrational direction and or defining things differently, just understanding things differently altogether and discovering more of my true identity before I think I know what I want. So either way, it's about realigning yourself in both scenarios, but sometimes you need to investigate what is the lack belief and sometimes you need to investigate your direction or focus itself because it might, might not be in alignment with your truest desires. And so higher mind will support you and will protect you in a way from your own ego effect that you cannot walk too far out of alignment with your true path. So I hope this makes sense. So the reflective attitude is all about understanding, first of all, that you're not just a physical mind, you're also a non-physical mind. And beyond that, you're the love light of the unified nature, the combination of all of your expressions in one, which is the higher self. Now this higher self again is not as practically relevant to your life as the non-physical mind, which is paying attention to every step you're, you're taking. And it's like always nudging you and guiding you. It's again, that bridge between the higher self's true desire for a thematic exploration in this life, which is sort of like just a boom, an overarching desire. And then the non-physical mind makes that more specific and guides you as you're going along the way. And it's nudging your free will to pay attention, but it is up to you to pay attention. Now the reflective attitude again, is something you need to intrinsically desire for yourself. You need to understand that if you're not paying attention, you will make things worse and worse and worse for you. No matter how many tools of law of attraction or empowerment or waking up you have at your disposal. If you're not willing to be humbled and listen and pay attention to what you, because that's really who you are. This is not really who you are. So you have to be humble enough from the assumption, the assumption of this is who I am to understand that there is a greater part of you that you would really regret if you were to be insistent upon what you think you want upon death, for example, or when you have an expanded experience and you realize that you've been egotistical in a way, you've been insistent, overly insistent, overly controlling of your journey. And therefore 
you've actually missed the boat a little bit of what this life could have become had you only trusted the impulses of your excitement and the impulses of your intuition with greater clarity, with more humility, with greater meditation and silence of self or silence of mind, openness of mind. So have an open mind. I highly recommend it because if you're not paying attention, things will in some way always get worse. Whereas if you pay attention, things in some way or lots of ways or always will always overall become better. Doesn't mean there's no more challenge. Doesn't mean there's no more catalyst. Catalyst is always here. It's part of the nature of this type of a incarnational illusory experience. Nevertheless, it can become a really highly enjoyable ride, which is rich with learning, rich with waking up, rich with expansion, rich with service to others being amplified, rich with your journey extracting all of that information and learning and transformation that you're responsible for back into its soul journey so that it can expand and move even closer to the one infinite creator on its own level. So pay attention, be humble enough, and things will be given to you and flow to you. So the best way to be selfish, the best way to fulfill your dreams is to actually be humble enough to listen to what your dreams might instruct into you rather than you imposing your dreams upon your reality. And this is important to really sort of, to some extent at least, master before you move on to Empowerment 3, in which I'm going to explain how to basically paste your preference onto your reality to where shifts can happen really rapidly. But in order for you to fully do this with alignment without confusing yourself, you need to have mastered to a decent extent the ability to listen, pay attention, open up, be receptive, be humbled. So take this lesson seriously, sincerely rather. Everything always, not so seriously, but sincerely. So again, the reflective attitude is exactly that. It's an attitude that needs to be intrinsically motivated and it will help you learn things before they have to become manifest. Now, isn't that an amazing bonus that you're getting from paying attention? You can now learn lessons on an imaginative level. A lot of the times I'm just, whatever, physically brushing my teeth, but I'm actually learning lessons that I otherwise would have to have learned having gone through or by going through physical catalysts and physical struggle and physical challenge. But I'm learning things by simply being so receptive that my soul is teaching me all these different perspectives and I can imagine, oh, how would I respond to this scenario? What would this mean? What would this teach me if this were to happen? So even while I'm brushing my teeth, I've got teeth, I've got all these different perspectives going on. Now this is because of my training and my desire to pay attention to those nudges. So I am in very clear, direct communication with my higher mind all the time. And so that's why I can offer reflection to other people in the way that I'm doing now or in my personal life. It's because the communication is very unblocked. I'm not in the way. I'm not very biased anymore, if at all. So my joy has become to become totally transparent. And I want to inspire you to achieve the same kind of clarity, if not even more so that you can truly be of benefit to all of these other portions of yourself, all these other manifestations within the collective dream that we all agree to experience. So that this world, this world can become an amazing collection of beings, of agreements that reflect the true heart, that reflect love, compassion, wisdom, and waking up to the greater all that is oneness that we all share, that we all come from, that we all are, that we all will return to. So adopt a reflective attitude, use the symbolism of catalyst. For example, when something physically happens, use it as a symbol, see it as a reflection of yourself. Always see things as a reflection of yourself and you'll guarantee yourself of quick, rapid, and I would almost say effortless learning. It won't always feel effortless, but it will be the path of least resistance from a broader point of view than insisting and just being blind to what's being nudged your way. So do not be insistent, be open, be receptive, be reflective all the time, and you will make yourself more transparent to your true self, and you will become an embodiment of your true desires, and things will then manifest for you real rapidly, because you're no longer constantly misguided, you're no longer thinking that you want something when you know it's not the case, 
and you're no longer really blocking yourself with beliefs of unworthiness. Because the closer your vibration gets to the vibration of your non-physical mind, the closer your vibration also gets to the vibration of unconditional love for yourself and all that is, an unconditional understanding of the fact that you are a deserving and an endlessly, endlessly deserving being, that you are infinitely worthy of your true self, making itself manifest effortlessly and epically. So take this to heart, please become the reflective attitude and make more efficient use of catalyst so that you can expand quicker and all the things you truly want can be allowed into your reality. This is what we all desire. So that's kind of the full package. Go practice this, go apply this, watch this video two more times, three more times, four more times over the course of the next week or two, just to get into the vibration of it, just to get into the clarity of seeing and starting to apply this to your life, of seeing how these things are symbolizing your inner state. So the homework for this lesson is to A, meditate on the reflective attitude in general and visualize yourself as going through life, being highly reflective from a more connected to the non-physical mind place or point of view. Just visualize the image, just see it, feel it, be it. See it and feel, feel what it would feel like to be that way, to learn that fast. And if you wanna use me as a symbol, for example, you can use me as a symbol too. What would it be like to live like me? Or anyone else that you admire in this particular way of transparency, of having sort of mastered a reflective attitude. Go ahead and have fun and apply this to your life. And so be the second lesson or the second piece of homework is as always to take this with you into everyday life and to become that observer kind of like in the previous lesson but now with the additional knowledge of how catalyst is transferred first to the mental body and then when you're not paying attention to your emotional guidance system consistently and you keep misplacing the cause of your discontentment outside of yourself and you keep insisting that that's what you want because that will make you feel better but you're not Meditating, you're not silencing yourself, you're not receptive to pay attention, enough to pay attention and know what's truly desired within your overall being. See how it then transfers itself into your circumstances and the physical body. So if you have any discontentment physically or circumstantially, you know you gotta take a couple steps back and retrace it to the original cause, which is a misaligned thought or direction. Thank you very much. I love you. See you at the next lesson.